Hello, hello, welcome to Agitech. This channel is dedicated to teaching young programmers how to code basically from scratch, step by step. This lesson will teach you how to write basic web pages using a web application. So we are going to look at the basics for a complete beginner how you can use HTML to write a web page. So without much I do, let's jump straight into action. So the first thing I need to do is to have a text editor. You can use any text editor of your choice. I'm using the Visual Studio Code Editor. You can use Atom or Notepad++. But I recommend that the one that will work perfectly for you. You stick to that one. So for this lesson, I'm going to use the Visual Studio Code Editor. So the first thing I will do after launching my VLC Code Editor is to click on File. Or you go to File menu and then click on File. The first thing you need to do is to save that file. So I'll go back to Files and go to Save As. So let me save this as Index index.html so you can save .html or .htm any way will work okay so i can select the file extension from here and then i'm saving this to my desktop okay so when i click on save i've actually saved this now okay so we can start coding the first thing we need to do is to define our tags most of the time you have to create a tag for your page and then when you do that you have to also end that tag so the first thing we may need to is also to create our first task. We need to have HTML this way. So notice automatically because I'm using the Visual Studio Code Editor, it's giving me auto completion, so it can easily close my tag for me. So you notice this has been closed for me automatically. So within our header, our HTML open and closing tag, we are going to embed several other tags within that. So the first thing you need to do is to have a body also within your tag. So you notice if I first type body and I hit the tab key on my keyboard, automatically it will close, it will give me the closing tag for that particular tag. So within my HTML tag, we also have what you call a head. So we need to have a head and that one also we have open and closing. So within our head, we'll be embedding several other codes within that. But in this lesson, I'm not going to do that. The only thing I'm going to use within my head will be the title. So I will explain what the title does. So if I go to title, the title normally display the title of the page. So if I say my page, if I say my page for instance and I save this, basically I've set this text editor to auto save. So everything has been saved for me. So if I go to this, what I've saved to my desktop, I've saved as index. So you can see over there, I'm using my default browser. So you notice that if you come here, you can see my, my what? My page. So basically, if you are using a title, that's what your title will show. Okay, so let's continue with where we left. So we have the title display within your browser. So anything we want to show on our web page will go inside our body. As simple as that. So let's say, for instance, we have several other things that we're going to use. We have six type of header in in HTML. So we have header one up to header six. So if I use header one, you notice I need to have open and closing tag as well. So if I open and then I close this tag and I put in a say, let me say this is header what one. And this, like I said, my browser has been set to what my test editor has been set to auto save. So this has been saved automatically for me. If I go back and reload this page, you notice that what header one is showing within my browser. Let me also zoom in this for you to see. So my header one is also showing within my browser. And what you need to know is that header one is the largest among them among our six headers so if i go back and i go to header what if i go to header two and say what header two and i go back to load my page see header two will be smaller than what header one so let's try out the six and then we'll, we'll notice the difference between them so i can go back and say what header three and i'll see what header what header 3 and I can go ahead and then do it for the rest so I have header 4 like I said we have what 6 headers in HTML so this is what header 4 I will now go ahead have header 5 and header what 5 and then lastly we have our header what 6 we have header 6 so let me call this one header what 6 <coughs> okay as simple as that so we've at least cover the entire header that we are going to work with in html so if i go back here and i load my page we'll see that six is basically the smallest among them 
So these are the basically the type of headers we'll be using within HTML. We have other things that you can create within HTML. We have also what we call a paragraph. So I'm going to delete the rest, leaving only header one. So I can to create a paragraph within your HTML. You can use my paragraph. So to create paragraph, use the P keyword, which stands for paragraph. So let's say this I'll type this is my paragraph. Okay. So if I go back to my page and I load this and I load this page, notice that well, I've created my paragraph. I can go ahead and create another paragraph. So we say paragraph meaning the next one will also go to a different line. Okay, so I can go ahead and then type what P again, create another paragraph. So let me say this is my second word paragraph. Okay. So I'll go back and reload my page. As you see, my second paragraph also displayed on my page. There are several other things we can do within our paragraph. So it will notice that within paragraph, you can't even add some italics. So maybe I want the second to be an italic text and then a paragraph over here should be bold. I can easily do that within my paragraph. So maybe I want to just apply some para italic text to this. So I can just do that. And then notice that you need to close that as well. So use the forward slash to close any document. Use the forward slash this way. Okay, so I've closed this as well. If I go back and load this page, notice that the second will be looking like an italic text. So let's see. So you notice that the second has changed. We can also use the bold keyword using the B to bold in this part of our paragraph. So if I go back to my document and I use a B tag, so notice that I have to close this as well. So I need to close this using okay so i've closed this as well and if i load my page notice my b will not be bold that's there's an extra tag over here in a sense extra this and i need to remove so you notice what this has been bolded there are several other things we can do within what html let's go ahead and then also create some few other things over here we can create what we call list assuming we have some information we want to display we can create a list for that so under list we have several types of lists in which we are going to talk about so let's look at the the first two okay, we have what we call ordered lists and an ordered list so if you mean an ordered list is ul stand for what an ordered list meaning they are not in a specific order so if i hit the tab key okay you, you need to know that this you also have what open and then closing tab and then within an ordered list, we have what's called a list item, li, list item. So you use the li, which means list item. When I hit enter, I'm also going to open and then close this. So let me say item what one. So I could have several list items or lists within my an ordered list. So I can have another say maybe item what two. And then finally, let me just add another one, li again. So notice that you need to open and then close the tag. I'm using the Visual Studio Code Editor, so automatically it's closing that for me. So I recommend you also get Visual Studio Code Editor and Code Editor, and then to make your life very simple. While once you are writing this kind of code, so let me say this is what items what three. If I go back and then reload this page, you notice that this has been listed in that unique order. So this is not in a specific order. So this way we can use what the unordered list. We can also use the order list and order list will number them in what one, two, three in that order. So let's create an ordered list below this. So we also have so ordered list will come what O L this way. So this is what ordered list. So hit enter. This one is also having closing and then open and then closing tab. So within ordered list, we also have what we call the list items. So let me go with the same process. So item one. Then when I go down here, there are some shortcut way in which I can do this thing in a very nice way. But because this lesson is for complete beginners, I'm trying to go through the long process for you to understand what exactly I'm doing. So if I hit tab key, I can say what item what two. Then I'll finally bring my next item. So let me see what item what three. Then I made some spelling mistake over here, so let me correct that. So if I go back and then reload my page, you notice that what this is in what a unique order. 
So we know that this has been listed in an order. This is not in what in this specific order. We also have what you call the rule. I can easily apply some horizontal rule. So to add the rule, a horizontal rule in HTML, use the HR keyword. This is self closing. When I mean self closing, what this means is that you don't need to have open and a closing tag. So this will close itself. So if I do it this way, you notice that I don't have any closing tag. If I go back and load my page, you notice I have a very nice horizontal rule running through my page. Okay, so we know how to what? Add list items to our page we've added our title and we also look at what the header types that we have within html we can create forms and tables within our html but this is just part one of this lesson i'm going to show you how you can create basic form and then we can end this lesson and continue another time so within or below the list items to create tables you can easily go ahead and say table so table also as what we call open and then closing tab so within tables you have what you have tr tr simply means what table rule so within table rule we can start creating in document so within table rule we so we have what ht means table head this way so we are going to have our table head and then from there you can have a td td means table data so within my table head i've opened a table rule and then I've closed it as well. So within the table here, let's say we want to name. So let's look at the order in which this will be displayed to us. So I'll have another th table head again. Let's say score. So we can easily use this to display the score or the table for a soccer team. So we have maybe your final table head. Okay, so let's say standing okay let's call this standing if i go back to my page and i load this look at what is happening right now we don't have any border around we can format this using uh, css which we'll look at in our subsequent lesson but within my table opening tag i can just put in a border over there and then set my border to two remember the value of load my page you notice what is happening so the border size will determine the thickness of your table that's what you can see over here so let me go ahead and then put in some records within that table so i have name score and then standing so let's say i want to create another record and that is so this is a table here to create table data we need to create another table row so we have what three different kinds of what head so we need to also have table data in that order so every data will have so the first data will be under name, the second will be under score, and the last one will be understanding. So TD means what table data. So maybe the first one will be name. So maybe I can say Chelsea. Okay, so I'm trying to display just a simple soccer team. So the next one will be maybe the score of the team. So maybe if possible, let's make this a point so that it look maybe more explanatory to us. So let's say point. Okay. So we'll come down here let's say chelsea is having maybe 89 points and then let's say standing the standing could be let's say is having what first position this way i'm going to show you something over here so maybe i want let me load this page and then i'll come back and explain to you so you notice what is happening over. maybe i want this first to appear at the top so how do i do that we can easily use the what you call the subscript we use superscript for this so we we'll use the keyword superscript like this and then we need to also close it so notice this will make my st that's the first listing display at the top so look at this so it has moved my st to the top so we can easily display this information within our table so notice that we can go ahead and then add another data to this table to do that we need to create another rule so we are creating another rule for the next record so maybe we want to add another team so let's say this team is what maybe united so let's say this is united okay and then united let's say united is at what is having a point of 80 points okay 
Okay, maybe United fans may may not like me for this, but it's just for the purpose of this lesson. So let's say this is for second position. So we're going to use the same superscript to display our second at the top. So I just go ahead and over here I'll have my second display as what well, superscript. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead and just say, okay, as simple as that. So, because of my text editor, most of the things are easy to do for me. I can just go ahead and reload this page. So, you notice basically this is how we can display tables in HTML. There are several things we are going to learn over here. So, remember, you need to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell in order to get updates anytime we upload new videos. This is a beginner course and we are going to do it in several parts. So this is part one, I'm going to have part two, and then in, order, in that order until we maybe we are able to finish everything we need to know to be maybe a qualifier or maybe a complete HTML developer. After this, after HTML, we also learn how we can create, we can format our pages using style sheet, that's cascading style sheet. We'll look at everything step by step with no step skipped. So remember you need to subscribe to this channel. We can create forms as well where we can accept input from the user. We need HTML to do that as well. Thank you for watching this tutorial and don't forget to hit the like button and then also subscribe to this channel.